Hi, I'm John Balbana, a professor at the University of Texas. In our Introduction to Embedded Systems class has a class competition where each group of two students will create a handheld video game, which has the microcontroller, a slide pot for input, buttons for input, a DAC to create sound and graphics uh, to show the game. And they put that all together to make a game that's fun to play. Now let's watch. Welcome to EE319K Super Finals. As you know, these are the top winners from each of the classes. Uh, and no grades, this is just fun. Our first game is called uh, Helicopter Escape Ultra. And tell us about it. So anyway, so the idea behind the game is you're the helicopter on the left, and you're moving up and down, and walls are coming at you. You're trying to dodge them and survive as long as possible, right? Um, and there are three difficulty modes that we implemented. Right now, Anita is playing easy mode, and the way that works is the, uh, the slide bot, which she's uh, moving with her hand, uh, controls your position on the screen. So you move it up, and you'll just move up in a you know, pretty straightforward fashion. Um, if you play on medium mode, the slide pot controls your velocity, your vertical velocity. So um, if you have the slide pot all the way up, you'll be slowly moving upward at a linear rate. And hard mode is uh, controls, the slide pot controls your acceleration. So um, that one's a lot harder to do. Um, some interesting things to notice about the game is that it runs at 60 frames per second, so the graphics are silky smooth. Our next game is called Tetris. Uh, so tell us about your game. So it's pretty much the standard Tetris. You press the button to start, and then you can press the button to rotate the piece, and then you move the slide pot to move it left and right. Um, it does make sounds. You can't hear them. But, okay, so each of the pieces is made up of four little blocks, and that's just how Tetris works. They're all made up of four blocks. However, in order to make sure that our pieces did not overwrite what was already there, we had to program each of the four little blocks individually. So whenever you see a piece falling, that's not just one thing that, that's falling, that's four things that are falling. Uh, and then they fall in that particular. There you go. Ta-da! Nice. You are good at this. You are, you are, you are all, right. all right, all right, all right, all right. I'll, sh I'll shut up. Nice. Nice. Don't you hear <laughs> Okay, so we did Space Invaders. We're basically saving you from the alien invasion at UT, uh, and also Professor Y as well, after this first level. Uh, we implemented a, instead of moving individual sprites by themselves, we implemented a, uh, basically like a frame. So for example, if the first row is killed, then, uh, then it moves the entire frame over. Oh, you made it, boss level. Tell us about your game. Tell them. Okay, so basically our game is um, Pong interfaced across two LCDs. And so um, Irene's going to hold the wires because they're very um, temperamental because we're using FIFO. So if the UART wires mess up at all, then the whole game messes up. But um, so basically the same program is loaded onto both. And what you're seeing right now is the Ramesh Rush, um, <laughs> which is a super speed mode. And that um, happens for like six turns across both LCDs. Yeah, so it just ended. Um, so we used a random number generator for that. So if the, the yeah, there it was again. Um, and so now the ball is going faster. 
Um, also, the ball, depending on where it hits the paddle, will um, hit off at a different angle. And um, and so, so there are two microcontrollers there? Yeah, there are two microcontrollers. Ooh. And we're using... And so we just won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we have two microcontrollers and the FIFO is connecting both. There's only one DAC, so the FIFO has to um, communicate uh, like any time the ball hits the paddle. It'll, if it hits the paddle on the other microcontroller, it's going to have to send something over to the, basically the main microcontroller to tell it to output the sound. Or when you win or lose the game, they'll make that little noise. Yeah. Uh -oh. All right, our third, our third contest, contestant is Space Shooter, and so uh, tell us about your game. All right, well this is just our version of a classic Space shoot 'em up game with aliens. Uh, we made our own graphics for most of the sections, rather than, we used a couple from Space Invaders. And if you want to, we have three different stages on here. Each stage has a regular level like this, and then a boss level that shows up when the warning sign flashes. Get on. So you do have to get through each stage. Uh, your lives will refresh when you get to the next stage because we found out otherwise you can't get through the entire game. <laughs> also, you'll see sometimes you'll see a little box on the screen. If you shoot those, it gives you an ammo power up. We have about seven of those, and you get to keep them as you go through the next levels. But if you use a light, it will degrade you one level down. Warning. All right, here comes the boss level. Oh. Yeah. Mm. We do have sound for this. You just <laughs> nice. <laughs> if we decide to use a toggle for it, you can go anywhere on the screen, so you can go all the way up to the top if you want. And that's what it looks like when it wins. Mm. We'll go to the next stage, all its lives will refresh. Yeah. But also, you may notice that the aliens seem to be shooting directly at you. We did include that as a feature, so you can't stay still because they will aim for you. <laughs> well, Oh, oh, no. Yeah. Okay. Okay, 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 just one. He's sweating. He's sweating. He's sweating. Oh! Oh! Nice. Nice. So there's an awful lot of... Uh, yeah, there's a lot going on. Lots going on. Right. Welcome to Tap Tap Supreme. So we did kind of a variation on Guitar Hero and the more recent app Tap Tap. Um, so we use the, a, uh, the ADC slide light to select the song. Um, once we decide what song we want to play, we can press any of the buttons to start playing. So whenever the button gets right before the screen, you want to press it. Maybe? Yeah. Well, much better. quality of the song isn't quite like <laughs> awesome. Um, the reason that is is because we used a sign table and that was to overcome uh, the challenge of having huge arrays because we couldn't really fit, you know, 30 second songs into our code. Mm -hmm. So instead we used a uh, we used a sign table. We had a few and so each song was kind of defined by a struct that had like the notes and the rhythm laid out and you could also sort of define which sign table you wanted to use based on the instrument. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to 319K. We had a commercial interruption for our YouTube <laughs> video. We're going to, no we're not, okay. <laughs> our next team is called Circus Atari. Please tell us about your game. Okay, so our game is Circus Atari and how it works is you press the button to start and the basic idea is to move the slide pot left and right to pop the balloon. Ooh, so I'll play it to show you. And as you keep playing, it gets faster, so that's how it's supposed to get harder. And you have three lives. Like, oh, we're looking at that. And this is actually based on a 1977 video game that um, my mom actually played. So. <laughs> <laughs> Has she played this one? Yeah, she uh, okay, she approved? Yeah, she really liked it. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's got mom approval. <laughs> nice. I see. Now, do the people move with uh, gravity, or is it uh, linear, linear velocity? That's a linear velocity. 
since the problem of what to back here. Uh, our next contestant is called Zombie Slayer. Uh, tell us about your game. So there's zombies, there's color, there's multiplayer, there's shooting, there's joysticks. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a beautiful box, and yeah. all of that stuff is hidden underneath. Yeah, it's got instructions too, so, yeah. Yeah, there's four movement buttons, and then there's the joystick to aim, so you can move and aim in any direction, so. And there's one more button for shooting. Shooting. So. Nice. Oh, <laughs> there, all right. Enough talking, let's start playing. Look at all the graphics. You can see the zombies and Ooh. a little sprite that shows that you're shooting. Yep. <laughs> There's also blood. So you can see that <laughs> after we kill this round of zombies, more will spawn. So it's kind of like there are a few waves before the final boss. And you can see your score at the top as long as, as well as your life bar. If you die, you lose five points. So don't, don't die. <laughs> okay. So there are two players here. Yeah. Ah. Oh, player one. I see. Play. Is it against? Are you on the same team, or are you against each other? Well, the goal is to get the most zombie kills. Oh, okay. So you, why don't you shoot the other guy first? There's no. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. You cannot harm your. Oh, okay. Fine. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. No, no, Chris. No. Get up. Oh, look at all the zombies now. Look at them. 24 to 6. We know who's played this game. There's also sound, but it's really quiet. Yeah, there's a gunshot noise and that we use MATLAB yes. to make a little Turn around. Oh, oh. Well, it looks like Chris died. Oh. <laughs> So now we have one more zombie. <laughs> Jeez. That's dark. Uh, I'm going to die again. Come to me, Chris. Let me tank them for you. <laughs> and there's the boss. Oh, get him. Yeah, back up. That's what I do. Back up. Yeah, right. This is a little slow. Mm. Oh, uh oh, slow? I don't think so. Pizza's coming at you. <laughs> yeah. Don't mess with the boss. Don't mess with the boss. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when you die, there's a continue button. Of course. So you can press yes to continue. Yes. Yeah, just in case you want to die all over again, huh? Oh, <laughs> that's so awesome. Okay, zombie slayer fellows, zombie fellows.